I was reading about DC Comics' recent Rebirth storyline and the story model that Jeff Johns is planning on using. And when I looked at the story model that Jeff Johns and Dan Dido were planning to use, it just made me shake my head. The DC Comics Rebirth relaunch is planned to go across all of the publications in DC Comics catalog over a period of two years. Think about that. Two years. You have an entire storyline going across an entire catalog of books. That is just insane when you think about it long term. It's just, it's just mind-boggling because this is the same story model that has crippled DC for the past five years and even before then with the pre-52 universe, these big, long, mega crossover events that go across the entire catalog and take over a year to finish. And now we have Jeff Johns and Dan Dido coming up with the plan for the storyline to go across two years. How is doing the exact same thing going to get a different result? The big problem with these big, long, mega crossover events is that it's impossible for a new reader to start reading comics. It is impossible for them to find that entry point. And when you have a storyline that th that's this long and cumbersome, it's not going to be able for any new reader to get into it. Stories are supposed in comics are supposed to be where the reader has every issue is an entry point, and every story pretty much allows a reader an opportunity to get in. But that's not going to happen when you have a storyline that has to take two years to finish, and the reader has no way of breaking in. Now I'll give you an example of how to do a storyline where every story has an entry point. For example, um, in 2011 I published The Temptation of John Haynes, and this was the first book that I did that started the SJS Direct Universe. And the sequel, The Man Who Rules the World, which is coming out in May, this is, you can buy both of these books, and each book is an entry point. You do not need to go out here and go buy a whole bunch of books. Now this one came out in 2011, this one's coming out in 2016. And I'm going to give you another example. Um, the Vampire Arc I started with Isis Knight of Vampires as a follow-up book, Isis Bride of Dracula. And again, you do not need to buy both books, but you can buy both books. And you can just get in and start reading with any book. But at DC, they want you to stay committed to an entire comic catalog for two years. That's not going to happen. Most people don't have the money to do this. I mean, who has the money to buy 16, 17 comics to follow an entire storyline. People didn't have it in 86 when they had Crisis of Infinite Earths, and they don't have it right now, but they're hedging their bets hoping that you're going to have all this money to continue buying all of these comics, and that is just ridiculous. Another thing that's really ridiculous from a creative standpoint, again, is them expecting all these creators to follow lockstep with each other. That's just insane as well. How do you manage a entire storyline for two years? I mean, even showrunners don't have that type of um, model put in front of them. I mean, executive producers of a show, creators of a TV show, they don't even put that type of um, on that type of burden on their writers because that's that's just too much for them. I mean, you may have a theme for your writers when you're on a show. And you might have a storyline set up, but your writers have creative freedom. And this model that he's applying, which he's trying, uh, really trying to apply a showrunner model to comics, um, is not going to work because creators really need creative space. They need room to breathe. And when you have a long, drawn-out storyline like this, they're not going to get that space to really create, to really get original, and really express themselves. An artist, that really is a very narrow and confining place. It's a really frustrating place to be in when you have a storyline that's pretty much being dictated to you and you can't really get any opportunity to express yourself in any way, shape, or form. And this this is not a good place for an artist to be. I look at this Rebirth storyline from a creative standpoint and it would be a stifling environment when you have to sit there for two years and have it dictated to you by a head writer and no room for you to really tell your type of story. So that's another big problem with this Rebirth storyline. You have this big, long, cumbersome storyline, which, again, 
it's going to be a headache for the new reader to get into because you've got to sit here for two straight years and buy every issue to get into it. And then you have, from the creative standpoint, the creator who has to sit here and try to navigate this maze. It is a nightmare, and it pretty much shows me that nothing has changed at DC Comics over the last five years, and it's not going to change anytime soon, as long as the same dysfunctional editorial team of Dan Dido, Jim Lee, um, Bob Harris, Diane Nelson, and Jeff Johns are still running DC Comics, because their solution to the declining sales of DC Comics is to continue to do the exact same things and expect a different result. Again, the, what I call insanity and the rest of the world calls insanity, these guys call business as usual. Again, two-year storyline in a time where people have said they are pretty much tired of these long, big, mega, cumbersome crossover events. When they're tired of having to try to find a hundred issues to finish one story. A time when people are saying that they want smaller, more compact stories. They want to go back to two-issue arcs, one-issue stories, three-issue arcs. This is what people have said that they wanted, but instead of listening to the customer, the DC editorial team want, wants to give you the exact same stories and the same failed story model over again in a brand new box and call it Rebirth. I mean, this Rebirth pretty much it should be stillborn. This model is a disaster waiting to happen, and it's just at the wrong time because we have comic, DC Comics readers who are tired of the dysfunction of DC. We have comic shop owners who are tired of being stuck with boxes and boxes of merchandise that they cannot return. And we have a comic book publishing marketplace where people are just tired of DC overall. I mean, DC really needs a new, man new editor-in-chief. They need a new brand manager, and they need a new direction. Because when I look at this DC Comics brand, they are not making it possible for old new customers to come into their products, and they're not making it possible for older customers to come into their products. Their product line is pretty much in a state of disarray, and I look at this approach, going at this two-year storyline, and again, it makes me shake my head. If you really look at it from a competitive business perspective, you would see that, you know, the comic book market has to compete with the internet, television, and movies. And a two-year storyline is not going to help comics compete on that level. I mean, by the time this Rebirth storyline finishes, guess what's going to happen? Supergirl is going to be in Season 3. The Flash is going to be in Season, I think, 5. And Arrow should just be canceled already. But you're going to have them still trying to push a storyline through. And then when you comp compare, um, add in the competitors, like the Netflix series like Daredevil, um, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, they will have made more progress in two years than DC has. And when you look at the superhero movies like your Infinity War, again, this is not a good model. All these competitors and all these competing products are going to be making more progress than your comic publications. And even guys like me, in two years, will be making more progress with two stories um, that are complete than your DC Universe. I mean, this is not a good model for a story. And I see what he's trying to do, but this is not the place to do it. You cannot take a television showrunner model and apply it to comics. Comics have their own story model, they have their own story approach, and the DC Comics really needs somebody with the vision and the insight to show them that, look, we need to go back to, again, one-issue stories, two-issue arcs, three-issue arcs, and at the most four-issue arcs, so that new readers can get to know the characters, get to know their approach to story models, and get to know um, what's great about DC Comics. But as long as these people are still in management, still trying to apply the same old approaches over and over again, nothing is really going to change regarding DC Comics. That's all I have to say for this video. You can pick up the new Isis Bride of Dracula on Amazon.com in paperback, and you really should because it's got Bill Walko did an amazing job on this cover. And you can pick up Isis Night of the Vampires, the previous story in the vampire arc. And you can pick up 
The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback um, on Amazon.com as well, and the sequel to Temptation of John Haynes on May 3rd, The Man Who Rules the World. Again, that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.